Hi everyone and welcome to the overview for week two. You'll be clicking on this from Moodle and each of these items is clickable so you can go straight down to one if you want. First I'll talk about last week's work. I've set all the forms to auto subscribe so you're going to start getting more emails than you used to get and you got a lot of them on Saturday. The good stuff was in them so I hope that you read them and if you only get one email and you want to go and see the thing that came around it, the thing that came before, the stuff that comes after, you need to go into the right forum. Uh, web design forums are getting great responses and this is the web design concept forum within help forums and wikis. So help forums and wikis are these things. Course Acad Code Academy, course design if you want to tell me there's something wrong or something you like. Google Apps like how do you copy a document, how do you have a uh, hangout. Any other tools like if we're using Asana or Lucidchart WordPress, which we're not doing yet, so don't write anything in there. And Web Design Concepts, this is the one that we really focused on this last week, and this is one, one I want you to check out and read everything. When you go into one, um, you see each of these gray things is a new topic that somebody asked, and you can find out who asked them here, and you can read the question, and then if you want to read what's inside it, you click on Discuss This Topic. Now you may see fewer things than me because I'm a course instructor, but you will see that you can get inside the topic and read what people write and that you can reply to what people write. Um, now how do you succeed? Well class participation is 50% of the course grade. You've got a forum post due by Wednesday night and you've got three comments or help things or questions due by Saturday night. As long as you do all those things to my specifications you're going to get 50 points for that week without even having to start doing any assignments. But your posts have to be substantial. There is a class participation guide that I've just written, and it says very clearly that you want your content of the post to be informative, and you want to take the right amount of space to deal with it. Don't write more than you need to. Write about relevant things. How do you get full credit for a main post based on when it's submitted and what, how good it is? These are called rubrics what happens for your comments and questions, and I talk about how you can get extra credit. This is all really good stuff to read. Um, this week, I expect that many contributors are going to realize that they really want to be users. The difference between a contributor and a user is that contributors have a live client, somebody that they're talking to. So if you're concerned that the course seems like a lot of work right now and you're getting kind of scared, Make sure you're a level one user and you're choosing be the bee.com as the website because if you choose another website, it could be harder to work with. So this is a good thing to make sure that the course will be as easy as it possibly can for you. Now there's a lot of words that you have to read, a lot of new ideas, and if you're not really great at reading stuff and understanding it, then have someone else each Monday help you go over the overview so you understand what's going to be required and you can get a good hand on it. Having a Google Hangout with your partner as early in the week as you can, like Monday, is a very good idea. In fact, if you're not having a Google Hangout with your partner, then it's either because you're having a hard time connecting with your partner, in which case you should ask me for a new partner, or you're really, really busy and it's hard for you to do stuff during the week, in which case your partner should be asking you for a new partner. Okay, now if you're worried about coding, I don't expect that you already know HTML, CSS. That's why I have you doing Code Academy. But if you don't do the Code Academy, when it comes down in week seven to do HTML, CSS, you will be lost and you'll get zero credit because I'm not teaching this stuff in this course. I'm relying on you to learn it on your own. Um, if you have particular, a problem with a particular Code Academy task, we do have that Code Academy forum where you can specify the task you're having trouble with, paste the code, and somebody else will answer it for you. Peer review is really, really great. Uh, if you try to do this course without working with a partner, it's not going to be so good for you, and it's going to be horrible for your partner. So make sure that you let me know, hey, you know what, I really, I can't do this partner stuff. I'm going to just sink or swim on my own. Tell me that so I can reassign your partner. And expert review is an even better idea. If you're planning on going into business, try to find a web developer now who can be your expert reviewer. And my guess is somebody in your extended family is a web developer, because everybody's a web developer. They say they are, um, or a web designer. So find somebody who's done a little bit more work than you have and get their advice. Okay.
That's my tips for success for this week. Now, let's talk about this week's work. We are in the analysis phase. It's not getting into the development yet. This is where you're building a picture in your mind of what's going on. Last week, you just finished submitting a pre-consult form for a website that you're either actually going to be building as a redesign from somebody else's website, if you're a contributor, or a website you're going to pretend to be building if you're a user. And when you completed the pre-consult form, you pretended to actually be the client who needs the website. Then when you got the form response, that merge doc, you now pretended to be the developer who's going to look for more information so that when you meet with your client, you can impress them with how much you've learned and can share with them. Because if you don't impress them and if you haven't done this work a lot, you're not going to get the job. You can get a job if you have a lot of experience and you can draw on that, but if you're getting started, the way you get the jobs is by doing your homework and being very smart and also not going over your client's head. So this week is the week which really determines whether or not you're going to get a client or not in real life. And for those of you who are level one users, this is probably some of the most valuable stuff you're going to learn in this course because even if you're not going to be web developers, you're going to be working in business of some kind. This is week two when we're going to have our consult and we're going to create a scoping document where we say, here are the things I think that you are going to need me to do. Next week is contracting. That's where we turn that scoping document into a contract. And then after that, we go into our designing the website and then we go into development, that whole ADDIE. -E -D -D -E. But this week is A for analysis and that's why we are in these three places. So. I want to show you using Lucidchart, which is a clickable flowchart, how all this is going to work. It's going to require that you create an account, but that's good because you're going to need a Lucidchart account for week five when we start to do what's called wireframes. So I'm going to just grab this link here. Okay, so you're going to click on View Flowchart and you're going to click on a link. Uh, that link is going to take you to a window. I'm going to show it in an incognito window. And I'm going to click on Login with Google, which you should click Login with Google too. Don't put anything here. If you don't use your student Gmail account, you're going to end up having to pay money and get into all kinds of trouble. So instead, just click that one and use your student Gmail account. And it'll open. And here it is. So what happens? The week starts. It's... Sunday night, you read the week two overview, which is what we're looking at now, and you scan the activities and resources. These are the activities and resources, and for week two, these are the ones. You're going to read your discovery meeting agenda. You're going to submit a report after you have your discovery meeting. You're going to copy a scoping document template. You're going to make your scoping document and then share it with me. And you're going to also read the class participation policy if you haven't done that yet to help you focus on your form work. So those are the things you're going to be doing over the course of the week. And right now you're going to read the overview and scan these things so that you're thinking about them. Now, next thing you're going to do is read your discovery meeting agenda because this is the sort of guide for how a discovery meeting goes. And I have all these different comments. Wherever you see anything that's yellow, you click on it. And it gives you a little bit of feedback. So click on each yellow thing go through this, get help with somebody else if it's confusing, but ultimately you're going to be meeting with your client or with another student pretending to be your client. And your client, it's actually only a client once they pay you money. Before they pay you money, they're called a prospect. They could be a client, they could not, and it all depends on this meeting. In this meeting, your prospect wants to know if they like you, you want to know if the prospect likes you. That's how you introduce when you're just establishing rapport, feel good stuff. Then in your meeting, you start talking about your history. You know, the prospect wants to know, do you have any related experience? You want to know, do they see your potential to help? You want to know, does the prospect, do you want to work for this prospect? And the prospect wants to know, do you care about their situation? So you basically read the topic, and then you see this is what the prospect cares about, this is what me as a developer cares about. And that's the sort of game plan. And if you make it through each of these steps in your role play well, 
if you're a user, or if you make it through each of these steps in actual fact when you're talking to your prospective client, then you should be able to get a contract and get hired. Unless it's one of the clients I found for you, they aren't going to be paying any money. They're helping you by giving you a context to work. If what I just said does not make sense to you, talk it over with somebody else or ask me questions in the help forum. But read this thing over. This is the, probably one of the most complicated things you're ever going to see from me. So it's two big things you have to accomplish. Come up with the right things to do and impress them so they hire you. And that's why I wrote this big complicated document to help you think about all of that. Anyway, back to our flowchart. So if you are a contributor, then you have to schedule a discovery meeting with your client. If you are a user, you're scheduling this meeting with your partner or another student in the class. How do you schedule a meeting with them? Well, you have that form that we've looked at a billion times before of the partners. And in that form, you then find people's, uh, this is your uh, partner sheet, right? This is where you can get people's email addresses and you can say, hey, uh, I'd like to have a meeting with you. Please, let's have a meeting. And the first person that you want to go for, if you're Michael, the first person you want to go for is Tyler. If you email Tyler and he doesn't email you back, you need a new partner. If you email Tyler and he says, I haven't got any time this week, man, I'm just jammed, then you want to find somebody else. Preferably, if you're a contributor, find another contributor. If you're a user, find a contributor. Uh, you might want to think about people in your quad. So if you, if Tyler is in your ducks, you want to look at the dragons. And here are some people in the dragons, uh, Marina, Carlton, and Melissa. This is a triple group, so lots of dragons to choose from. You schedule a meeting with another student. But... Anything can happen, right? So if you're, a, if you're a contributor and the meeting can't happen this week, you're going to submit a mini report because if you don't submit a mini report, you get no credit at all. If you're another student and you couldn't get a meeting with another student, you submit a mini report, otherwise you get no credit at all. But if you have a meeting this week, which is the thing we want to have happen, I'm going to talk about what goes on. By the way, if you're a student meeting with another student, not with a real client, you're going to take turns. So let's say you're a user and you did the site bethebee.com and your partner is a user and they did the site bethebee.com. They submitted a pre-consult form as if they were the owner of the site and so did you. Both of you will take turns playing the role of developer or client. So both of you have had an experience of working on either side of this agenda. So when you're a developer, you're thinking about these things on the right side. If you're a prospect, you're thinking about these things. By going through this role play, you're going to learn a lot. It's going to be confusing, but you're going to learn a lot. Um, then you submit a full report. Now, this full report is a Google form. It asks who was the developer, who was the client, what kind of meeting did you have, and if you will meet next week, that means you're a contributor. And if you won't meet, meaning you don't have any other students you can meet with, you're going to get 15 points just for getting this far on the form and then submitting it. The rest of it is not required, so you can just submit. But if you are actually having the meeting, a full report says, how did each stage go? Right? And you're writing this report from the standpoint of being the developer. The client doesn't write this report. That's why you're going to have to switch roles if you're users. If you're a contributor, you're having a real client there. Um, and this is why a lot of people right now are going to say, hang on a minute, I actually have to have a meeting with a real client? Whoa, I can't do that. I better shift to being a user. That's fine. Shift to being a user if you don't have a live client. Please do that. Don't be frustrated. Okay. Um, so you submit your report. Then you're going to revise your discovery doc for the meeting because you made this discovery doc where you wrote all about the what you think the website's going to need. You have to revise that. If you didn't learn anything new about the website during the meeting, it wasn't a very good meeting. Now, then you're going to look at the sample scoping document. Now, a sample scoping document, this is the thing that actually dis determines what you're going to do for the client. And this is one I did when I ran my uh, Greenfield Tech Scouts course for Franklin Hampshire Youth. So uh, I had students who uh, wrote this up and I gave them advice about it. But as you can see, you want to know who's the client. And you're writing this so that you, the client understands that you understand them. Why is the client coming to you? What do they need to have happen? 
you're going to write what the client understands the project to be here. And if you think the project should be something different, this meeting that you just had was your time to find that out. Redesign goals. These things should be stuff that comes straight out of the meeting that you just had. Something that is not wasn't talked about in that meeting should not be here because your client is going to look at this and they want to know, did you understand me? Did I understand you? Um, and then your objectives. This is where you show what a savvy web developer you are, where you list the actual things that have to happen with appropriate categories. If you're just a user, you're going to have a hard time with this. And if you're just a developer, you'll probably have a hard time with this. This is the hardest thing this week is to break the deliverables down into steps. That's okay. Talk about the project deliverables. What are they going to get at the end of this project? Now, in our case, they got a Drupal website, they got training materials, they got a live training, and then they got support with their launch. Those are the things that I'm going to give as a developer to my client, and maybe there's going to be a payment at each point. I don't know. But that's what a scoping document is. You have to convert your merge document, your discovery document, into this. It's a proposal for doing work. So that's the hard thing, is you copy your scoping document template, which describes what each of these things are, but doesn't give you any information. You see, that should be all familiar to you, right? Because you just looked at it. So how do you copy something? You click File, Make a Copy. And now you probably want to write your name here so that when you share it with me, I know who did it. So I say Bram's Project Scope Template, and then I want to say, Instead of template, what's the site? If you're a user, be the be.com. Okay, so now you're sharing this thing. In fact, now would probably be one time to actually show you how to share something. You're really not going to share it until after you've completed it, because right now it's just a template. There's nothing in here. When it's time to share, you click share. You type bram at greenfielddigital.com. And you say, here is my scoping document. I did meet with another student. And you see how that says can edit? You want that to be can comment. I don't want to be tempted to change anything that you did. And then you press send. And what happens is I now get an email that says, hey, somebody just shared something with me. Great. Now I know you did your work. And then I can go click on a link in that email and get to it. If you don't share it with me and you just try to get me get a link for this, I'm not going to be able to comment on it or maybe I can't even get it. So sharing is very important. I just also just taught you how to copy. So you've now copied your scoping template and now you create the scoping doc from your discovery doc, which means one of your tabs is the scoping doc and you start to fill it in. Who's the client? Donna Ducell, Franklin, Hampshire Youth, etc. You go through and you enter the information that you know in place of the information that's here. That's the real work of this week. And then after you do that, you want to get peer feedback. I've showed you how to share something. So if your partner happens to be Melissa, or maybe your partner's Megan, Megan Keys, right? So you say, Megan, please give me feedback. What do you see that needs help? I don't want my client to think I'm not articulate. And then you press send. She gets the email. She gets to look at it. And so once she looks at it, she'll highlight something and say, hey, there's a problem here. She'll click her comment button. She'll say, uh, what is her position? Right? She'll write that. You'll get a little email about that. You'll go, oh yeah, I'll have to say director. And I say, okay, I solved the problem. I said, she's a director. Now I'm going to click resolve. Her comment goes away, and I know that I can make my way through. I don't want to submit this until all the comments are gone, meaning I've solved all the things that my peer review person brought up for me. Now at this point, you may be asking, I don't know how to, how to talk back. I don't, I don't know how to give somebody advice about that. Well, this is an introductory course, so we're not expecting you to know. But just use your common sense. I bet you'll find some things to say. The more important thing is you're learning how to do peer review. All right, so you've revised your scoping document based on the peer feedback, and then you submit it, and that's one of the 
assignments, uh, which is share your scoping doc link or your doc. You'd go file, download as Microsoft Word, and then upload and paste it. Or you could click share and get your shareable link and copy that. Whatever you can do, just do one of them. All right, that's how you get through the work of the week. Now, if you're a developer and you couldn't have a meeting with your client this week, you're going to still have to submit the mini report, create a scoping document based on what you know so far, and submit that for a grade. But then you're going to have that meeting next week. You're going to submit a full report. You're going to revise the scoping document. And then you're going to submit that scoping document to me. When I find out that you've redone it, I give you a new grade. So obviously it's much better if you can have your meeting this week rather than next week. But do what you have to do. I know there are external constraints on everybody's time. Whew, that was a lot to talk through. Back to our overview. So now I'm going to be repeating things that I said before. You have two main things you're doing this week. You're holding a free consult, also known as a discovery meeting. It'll be either face-to-face, -face, that's the best, via Google Hangout, if you can train the person you're with to have a Hangout, or via phone, when you're both looking at the discovery doc together. You want to be looking at a document together. If you can't get your client to look at a doc and you have to do it by phone with them, you're going to spend a lot of time reading to them and they're going to have to respond. Now maybe they have a lot of time, so maybe that works. Then you're going to convert your discovery doc to a scoping document, which is also known as a proposal, based on the feedback you get from that meeting. And again, if you're a user and it's kind of a fake meeting with somebody else, I bet you're still going to learn a lot of stuff that will make you want to change it. Now here's where I write all about the stuff I've been saying to you so far. So just read this, just so you're really sure about it. Everything is here. And again, if you're a contributor, you have to have that live meeting. You don't get to not have one. But if you're a user, you can skip having a live meeting. You get fewer points, but at least you're all right. So that's why become a user if you are getting freaked out by the idea of having a live meeting in the next two weeks. That was all the nuts and bolts for this week. I now want to talk to you about getting hired, which is why we're going through this process of having that discovery meeting and thinking about the client and the prospect. You have this uh, discovery document, which is the meeting notes from your pre-consult form. You haven't met yet, so they're not really meeting notes, but they're, you're looking at the pre-consult form and you're trying to figure out what's going on. Then you have your meeting where you revise the discovery document based on what people have said back to you. You turn that into a scoping document, which is a proposal where you say, here are the things I now understand that you need to do. Are we in agreement that this is what's going to happen? If you can't get to that place, you can't do any work. So it's really important to know what needs to happen. And then if they want to hire you, they're going to agree to pay you. And they're going to sign the proposal and turn it into a contract. That's what we do next week. We convert the proposal into a contract. Next week is going to be an easy week. So I know that makes you feel good because this week is not an easy week. Um, so once you've got a contract, you now get into making the website. And now we're out of analysis and we're into design. Um, and here I just write all this stuff. Um, and this is all stuff I've talked about before. So just read it over. Asana. Um, somebody said, you know, how do I know what I'm supposed to do? How do I keep track of things? So I use a program called Asana. Well, actually, first thing I'm going to do is we're at a project. And let's say I'm a user, so my project is be the b.com. Redesign. What's the first task? Well, we're getting started this week. So our first task is going to be um, uh, scheduling the meeting with client. And is there any resource that I need to schedule this meeting? Yeah, because I need to find the names of the people. So I copy this and I go over to Asana and I put that link in there. So now again, I may not, I may have to come back to this later and do that, but when I do, hey, there's my link. That's pretty handy. So after I schedule the meeting, well, I've got to go and report on the meeting. So is there a link associated with that? Yes, there is. Copy the link.
Boom. Yeah, that's pretty easy. Okay, what's the next thing I need to do? Well, I'm going to need to uh, get a copy of the scoping document template. Copy scope, scoping document template. Put that link right there. Right. Now, what's the next thing I have to do? I need to uh, create a scoping document from discovery document. Well, I copied the template that created the new document. So here, the link I really want is the link to my discovery document, the thing that I made before. So that is back from week one, my web consult form. I'm going to pick on Carlton, grab that link, paste it right there. So now he's got that link. He knows he's going to be doing those two things. And then I have to uh, submit scoping document. And what do I need now? I need the link to my task from Moodle. And, uh, you know, Ms. Moranis wrote that I'm supposed to read the uh, class participation guidelines. I guess I'm going to go and do that. All right, fine. Boom. So, so there's something kind of nice about seeing that you have all the things you're going to do and the resources that you're going to need to do them. So did I schedule my meeting? Hey, I did. I talked to that person. He said he was going to meet with me. Wonderful. Click the thing in there. Boom. It's gone. Already done. How lovely. Did I report on my meeting? Yes, I did. Oh, it's gone. That's lovely. Did I copy the scoping document template? I did copy it. How wonderful. Did I create the scoping document? Oh, you know, that's that hard thing. That's the thing that's going to take me a while to do. I'm going to come back and do that Wednesday. So I'll go over here and say, when is that due? I want to do that Wednesday after I've done my post. Oh, I forgot to write post on the forums. Add task. Post on forum about meeting. And I think I'll just drag that up. OK. Oh, that's so important. That has to be done on Wednesday. So this one isn't really due on Wednesday. This one really isn't due until Saturday. I think I've demonstrated enough how all this stuff works. So here's what you're doing this week. You're holding your discovery meeting. And there's your link to learn about what the meeting agenda is. Your users are doing it with a partner. Contributors are doing it with a client this week or next. And their contributors, if you can serve as a free consult client for somebody else, if you're asked, please do that. Then you have your discovery meeting report, where you talk about what happened. You get the scoping document template. You convert it into a discovery document. This is the sample. And then you create the new scoping document as your assignment, and that's the length of the assignment. And then optional. If you're going into business, you probably want to use Asana. You might want to do a competitive site of analysis and add that to your discovery document. That's where you compare your client site to another site that you think is better. So that you can give the client an example of what would look like, what better would look like, and convince them to spend money to go have your, his thing look like that. You can see how that would be helpful not only to get you more money because you're upselling, but also it makes you seem smart because you're actually thought of something the client didn't think of. And if you're doing that, then you want to make two proposals. The Ford, which is just giving the client what they say they need, and the Lexus, where you say, but we can also do these extra things that will cost you money. Do you want to do those? Um, being able to make two proposals qualifies you better for the client and lets the client know that you're thinking further along the line, but the client still might just say, you know, I just want the Ford. Thanks a lot. And how we get evaluated this, this uh, week, 50% are for the uh, class participation for the forum post. What's the forum post? Anything. Something related to the work of this week that is substantive. Either a really, really good question based on something that you're sharing about stuff you're doing or something that you're noticing. And then your assignments. So 50% is the forum post, 50% of the assignments. And if you're a contributor and you serve as a client for a user, you get an extra five points for the week. Okay.
that's week two.